Hello there! When you were a young Padawan, would you have liked to have had starships hanging from your windows in your room? Did you know you could have? Did you know the Globe, Galoob, the maker of Micro Machines, produced a series of ships and vehicles titled Action Fleet for The Phantom Menace, Episode 1. Welcome to Unboxing the Boxes, my Star Wars collection. This is Episode 67, the Episode 1 Action Fleet and Applause Danglers. <laughs> If you remember back at video number 41, I opened a tote full of Star Wars Episode One Micro Machines. Well, I found another tote to go along with it. This tote contains danglers created by Applause, featuring various ships from both regular Star Wars movies and The Phantom Menace. And it also contains Action Fleet vehicles made by Galoob. Some of these vehicles might be new to you, even though they're over 20 years old. Let's go through this and see what we got. But of course, before we do, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. We've been doing nicely the last couple of weeks. Slowly getting up there. Make sure you leave a comment at the end and share the video with your friends. Now, let me get this tote emptied to save us a little time. Okay, are you ready to begin? Here we go. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the danglers. And the danglers were little ships that actually had, well, let me pull one out here. They were little ships based on various vehicles or starships from the uh, movies that you could use this to stick to a window and as you can see, they would dangle in front of the window. And you could imagine they were flying through space, trying to get to where they're going. Kind of a nifty little idea. Actually, I have uh, six of them that were produced for the Phantom Menace. And I have six of them that are just regular Star Wars ships. So let me get this one closed up quick and let's go through them. The first one here... Like I said, the first six here will be from episode one. And I do like this again. All of them say episode one. They do not say The Phantom Menace because I think these were produced early enough that the name of the movie hadn't been released yet. This one is the Vulture Droid, as you can see. Um, actually, pretty nice detail on it for being so small. Um, so it gives you the first of the uh, ships, droids, whatever you want to call it to hang from your window from The Phantom Menace. The second one we have here is one of the Sith ships. As you can see, um, there again, some fairly decent detail considering it is so small. The next one is one of the Trade Federation ships which they used on Naboo to bring the droids, the battle droids, into position. And then we've got one of the Naboo fighters that you saw toward the end of the movie, especially the last third, where the big climax of the battles, space battles happen. There's two more, and these are both for pod racing. First of all, we have Anakin's pod racing, car, vehicle, or whatever you want to call it. And secondly, we have, I believe this is Sebulba's. Pod racer. Of course, they'd have to have Sebulba's along with Anakin's because, after all, those were the two main ones that survived the race. Spoiler, sorry. So there we have it. The six of them from The Phantom Menace. And like I said, we also have six of them just from the regular Star Wars movies, or I should say from the original trilogy. Uh, let's see here. First of all, we have a Star Destroyer. And there again, considering it's pretty small, there is a fair amount of detail on this thing. 
So Star Destroyer, keeping in line with that, we have a TIE Fighter, just your basic TIE Fighter, not Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, but just the basic one. And to continue along with the um, Empire's vehicles, we have a small version of the Death Star, along with the little laser crater, if you want to call it that. So there we have three for the Empire. We also have three for the Rebels. Of course, if we're going to have Rebel ships, well, we better have a TIE Fighter. So as you can see, the TIE Fighter does have some fairly decent detail again, considering it is so small. Along with the TIE Fighter, what else did we use to battle on the deaths against the Death Star? Well, we have a Y-Wing Fighter. Most of those ships did not happen to make it through that battle very well. But another ship that did, of course, how could you have the Rebel ships and not include the Millennium Falcon? There again, nice detail on it, considering that it is such a small detail. So there we have it. The 12 danglers that I have made by applause for both The Phantom Menace and just the regular movies. Now, I did notice on a couple of these that I think they were on sale when I bought them. They were reg they're regularly marked at $5.99. I picked them up for $2.99. I think a couple of them I did pick. Well, this one doesn't have a sales sticker on it, so I must add by one at regular price. But all of these were $2.99 for the Phantom Menace, except for the one. And on the regular ones here, I must have paid regular price for them. Or maybe I didn't, but there is no sticker prices on them. But if this one's $5.99, I'm thinking they were probably all $5.99 as far as the new ones go. What do you think of these? Would this have been something, when you were a young Padawan, that you would have hung from your windows? be quite a few of them hanging from your windows if you had them all. Now, I don't know if these were all from that time period or not. I haven't seen any, really, in any store since then. So, I picked up the 12 I have, and that, I have a feeling, is what I'm probably going to end up with. So, let me get these out of the way <clears throat> and get to the next thing. Okay, we got little danglers hanging from your windows. But how would you like to have a Naboo fighter? It's a catapult flying model kit. So basically, it's a, it's a very light, light box. Um, has a catapult larch launcher, printed realistic graphics, incredible flights, easy to build, fun to fly. I would say this is probably going to be made out of cardboard. I actually have three of them. Found them in the store for a buck a piece. So I figured for a buck a piece, what the heck. And they all seem to be glued shut. Let's open one up and find out what these are actually made of. I'm thinking they're cardboard. I could be wrong. Maybe it's very light plastic. But let's find out what we have here. Well, it must be part of the launcher. I can see we've got instructions here. Yep, cardboard. Basically, punch out cardboard that you put together and make a fancy paper airplane is about what it amounts to. You can see on both sides here. Not too bad though. I bet you it would look pretty decent when it's put together. But as far as right now goes, I'm not gonna put it together. It does come complete with instructions on how to do it, how to use it. So, oh. now that I've opened a box, I might just have to play with it sometime. Chances are, though, I'll put it back in the tote and forget about it, like I did for all these years. I, I forgot I had these things, to tell the truth. But like I say, picked them up for a good price. They were only a buck a piece. Got three of them. All right, let's get to the main course of this video, and that would be the Micro Machines, although, you know, when I'm looking these over, most of them don't say Micro Machines, but I think these were the prelude to the Micro Machines. So first of all, let's go with this one. It is the Gungan Sub, and as you notice, the tail of the Gungan Sub has come loose, so I might have to open this box up and get that back on there so it looks decent. But you can see we've got a nice sub there, very good. The uh, 
Canopy does open so that you can put the figure of Qui-Gon in there. The little figure is slightly posable. It does have arms that move, jointed at the shoulder. Um, it is one of several versions of the different ships that are available. Let's see what else I have. So we'll start with that one. We've got the sub. Let's go from underwater to overland and get into pod racing. And the first one I've got here is Mars Goose Pod Racer, along with a little Mars Goose to go along with it. So this particular pod racer, if you look at the scale of the, the little guy here compared to the rest of the ship, gives you a pretty good idea if they would make this to a three and a half inch figure size, how big this thing would have to be to be in the same scale for it. This one does happen to come with a spinning energy binder, racing engine turbines, rolling wheels, and a cockpit figure, of course, that fits in the cockpit. So nice little thing there. You, I could see a youngster having a lot of fun if you got this one and the other ones to go along with it. Do I have any of the other pod racers? Well, yes, of course I do. I have Anakin's pod racer. So there we have a little Anakin figure again, able to be posed a little bit with the arms moving. But you can see again how big to the scale of the figure to the pod racer that this would be if they actually made a nice big one. So we've got the two pod racers here. And let's see what else we got. We're gonna get away from pod racing now. And we are going to go into the Trade Federation Droid Fighter. And you saw these toward the end of the film, of course. There again, we do have a posable figure. This one happens to be of one of Newt Gunroy's employees called Dalte Dufine. This droid fighter also is capable of standing. You can take the legs, fold them out, and have it walk just like it did in the movie. So there again, nice little figure to add to the collection. Not bad at all. What else do we have? Well, if we're going to have something with droids, well, we should probably have the Trade Federation MTT. In other words, one of those big ships that carried a lot of the droids out to the battlefield. If you recall that again at the end of Phantom Menace there. Very small droid. You can tell this is not as big a ship as what we saw in the movie, of course. Um, this would be a smaller version, I guess. But still, you could have a lot of fun playing with this thing. Next, we have the Trade Federation landing ship. Yeah, remember how huge these were in the movie? I mean, they were massive to bring all the droids and the ships and everything down to the planet's surface. Well, here you could have your own version of it. Granted, it's much smaller scale than the movie, but again, it does come with a battle droid that you can use to help plan your missions and carry out your orders. There was 10 different ones of these. So far, we have seen six here. The next two I have kind of fit in along with this, but they're electronic. A little extra bonus on these. The first one is a Fumba. That is one of the creatures that the Gungans used to carry their shield generators into battle. So you can see there, very nicely done. Uh, this one is a, a walking one. It actually does walk. We do have a, a little remote there. Um, the tail moves from side to side. It has a firing blasting cannon. And the head moves from side to side. So yeah, you'd have a very easy time pretending that this thing is alive if you were playing with it. What else do we have that's electronic? Well, we also have the Trade Federation tank. And this happens to be on wheels, so you can actually drive it around with your wired remote. Back then, we didn't have too much of the wireless remotes yet. Had to keep the cost down somewhat, so we put wired remotes in. So there, um, two electronic versions. What else do we have? Well, let's get these out of the way a little bit here. Because I have two more things, and they're a little bigger. A little bit bigger. Not too much bigger, but a little bit bigger. The first one I think is really neat. And that is the Pod Racer Hangar Bay. Pretty neat. If 
we look at the back of the thing, it has a lot of little features on it, as you can see. We've got two figures. We have a posable pit droid and a posable pit mechanic. And it has got all kinds of little moving parts so that you could bring your pod racers in here to fix them up before the big race. So imagine having this along with a couple of the pod racers. You could have a lot of fun with these things. The thing is, the figures were so small, I bet you they were pretty easy to lose. One more, and that you saw at the beginning of the show here, and that is the Jar Jar Binks Naboo Transforming Action Set. Micro Machines became very well known for their transforming action sets. Now, this was probably one of the first actual transforming action sets made by uh, Globe for the Micro Machines series, and they came out with quite a few of these over time. Um, whether this was the first one or not, I'm not sure. But it had to be one of the earlier ones. So opened up and uh, gave you a nice little play set there that you could use with your imagination. That's one thing that was really neat about these. You could really use your imagination when you were as a kid playing with these. So there we go. You've seen the Danglers. You've seen the Action Fleet by Gloob. What is your favorite in each one? What was your favorite Dangler? What was your favorite vehicle for the Micro Machines? Let me know in the comments section below after, of course, you like the video. And don't forget to subscribe. We're getting closer to that 400 subscriber mark. Be really cool if we could hit that yet before Christmas. So, until next time, may the force be with you and keep collecting.